Perfection is not a word that's used lightly, and in the world of Portal 2 speedrunning, perfection is a word that's rarely seen altogether. There are 60 single-player levels that all have incredibly competitive fights for the world record, but no matter how seemingly perfect a run is, runners always find a way to squeeze hundreds of seconds off of the time. But throughout the game's history, one level has always seemed a little closer to perfection than the others. That level, Neurotoxin Sabotage, has quite the unique speedrun. The level itself isn't actually that out of the ordinary. It takes place in Chapter 5, when Wheatley and Chell prepare to confront GLaDOS. In this level, the player is tasked with breaking the Neurotoxin Generator. They first have to navigate through a large area of catwalks, then through the small airlock area with two doors, and then take an elevator up. After ascending, the player hits a button, which gives them access to a laser, and opens the door to the Neurotoxin control room. The player now has to use the laser on these moving portal surfaces in order to cut the tubes to the Neurotoxin generator. Once all the tubes are cut, the player has to wait a bit until they are sucked into the pipe and the level ends. At first glance, the level might seem pretty normal, but it's the moving portal surfaces that really mess with the speedrun. It's the only level in the game with moving portal surfaces, and while it's a super cool idea casually, for speedrunning, it creates what we call cycles. Cycles are present in many different games and speedruns that have moving elements. Basically, your final time really isn't decided by how fast you can go. It matters if you're able to catch the moving element of the puzzle. The best metaphor for this is a bus stop. If a bus arrives every five minutes, it doesn't matter if you get to the bus stop at 6.56 or 6.59, you're still catching the same 7 o'clock bus. In the case of Neurotoxin Sabotage, all that matters is that you're able to catch the moving panel before it slices one of the Neurotoxin tubes. It doesn't matter if you arrive at the control room at 34 seconds or 35 seconds. If you're cutting the same tubes, you're going to finish the level at the exact same time. Because of this, the world record for Neurotoxin Sabotage has almost always been tied throughout the game's history. The first major world record that we'll look at is a 107.56, first achieved by Blumenrocker in late 2011. Blumenrocker navigates the catwalks pretty poorly for today's standards, but back then, the players had not really mastered bunny hopping. Mind you, this run was performed six months after the game's release. Blumenrocker enters the control room at around 37 seconds, just in time to catch the first tube on the right side. He then juggles the laser between the left and right side to cut all of the tubes, and then finishes the level at a 107.56. This time was quickly tied by Bananasaurus Rex, who was the best Portal 2 speedrunner at the time. His bunny hopping was a bit better than Blumenrocker's, but still with a lot of room to improve compared to today's standards. He managed to get to the control room almost a second faster than Blumenrocker, but this still resulted in the same cycle, as he couldn't catch an earlier tube on the right side. And Bananasaurus Rex had a lot to say about Neurotoxin Sabotage and his run. In his YouTube video description, he wrote, I think it might literally be impossible to beat this time. Here's the problem. No matter how fast you bunny hop, you get to the room where you cut the tubes at the exact same cycle of the moving platforms. I have done this time scaled with absolutely flawless bunny hopping and wall hopping, and if I had just gotten to the room a couple of seconds sooner, I would have been able to just barely make it soon enough to cut the last tube on the right ASAP before the platform had moved too far. It's definitely impossible though, as far as I can tell. Two more seconds is a very long time, especially considering I hopped absolutely perfectly. What a crap chamber, possibly the worst in the entire game. So, I guess that was it. The best player in the game declared 107.56 the perfect time. Neurotoxin Sabotage was solved. Many speedrunners would go on to tie this time, and they mostly agreed with Bananasaurus Rex, that 107 was the chamber's limit. But seemingly out of nowhere, 10 months later in December of 2012, a runner named Pocky got an insane run on Neurotoxin Sabotage. Are you going the right way? This 
This is the neurotoxin generator. Bit bigger than I expected. Uh, not going to be able to just, you know, push it over. Have to apply some cleverness. There's some sort of control room up at the top. So, uh, let's... Uh, there's a door. I should not uh, really. They do feel pain. It's all sort of simulated. There's a uh, feeling up there. I'm afraid the door... What are you doing? You don't know what that button is. Come on, now. Let's see. And Pocky had done the impossible. He managed to catch the last tube on the right side, and it resulted in a time of 105.23, over two seconds faster than the so-called perfect time achieved by Bananasaurus Rex and others. And while Bananasaurus Rex's video had an essay to go with it, all Pocky had to say was, Good luck to anyone who wants to try this. It's actually not that difficult. And he was right, as within the week, runners were starting to match this 105 time. But how exactly did Pocky manage to save two full seconds? The answer is simply just better movement leading up to the control room. More specifically, Pocky had a much better understanding of Portal 2's soft speed cap. Portal 2 has what's known as a soft speed cap, where after reaching a certain speed, the player loses air control. They're stuck going forward in their original direction until they lower their speed. This soft speed cap is in place because of the aerial faith plates so that the player stays on the intended trajectory of the catapult, and can't air strafe away. To talk numbers, the soft speed cap kicks in at 300 velocity. Compared to Chell's walking speed of 175 velocity, a skilled speedrunner is able to hit the soft speed cap in just two bunny hops. This sucks, because for harsh turns, like corners at catwalks, the player often has to slow down or even stop bunny hopping completely in order to make the turn. This is much different than other Source Engine games, where you can very easily make 90 degree turns and maintain your full bunny hopping speed. In Neurotoxin Sabotage, there are a couple of 90 degree turns on the catwalk, and in order to make these turns, we have to be below 300 velocity. While Bananasaurus Rex's run features really lazy movement around these corners, Pocky's movement showed a mastery of this soft speed cap, as he sufficiently slows down or stops bunny hops completely in order to swiftly navigate the corners. Combined with just generally faster bunny hopping, Pocky got into the control room over a second sooner, and was able to catch the faster cycle. And with that, 105.23 was now the perfect time. Pocky's movement wasn't flawless, but it certainly wasn't going to be beaten by over two seconds in order to catch the next cycle. So, runners would tie this 105 time, but with that, Neurotoxin Sabotaged was set to rest for about 15 months. While runners weren't able to improve their movement drastically, a very interesting strat was found on the map that allowed for a new cycle. It turns out that the ending door in the neurotoxin control room has no collision with projectiles. The door obviously stops the player from passing, but portal shots can travel straight through the door. It was such a small mapping oversight, but it had huge implications for the speedrun, as now, you could shoot a portal to cut the tubes on the right side much earlier, so it allows for completely new cycles to be achieved. This strat was discovered on February 26th of 2014, where the record for neurotoxin sabotage would be improved four times within 12 hours. Yarby was the first runner to utilize the portal through the door strategy, achieving times of 103.10, 103 flat, and ultimately 102.56. The 103 times got a similar cycle as the 102, but just had some weird hiccups in the run. Zaipei would take the next possible cycle, and achieve a time of 101.76, and this was a pretty impressive run. Zaipei was one of the most skilled Portal 2 bunny hoppers, so he was able to completely breeze through the catwalks. He managed to make it to the control room in time to catch the second tube on the right side of the generator, and that seemed to be the fastest possible cycle. Even Zaipe said, I guess this is perfect, but you never know with Portal 2. The shot through the door was able to cut 3.5 seconds off of the Neurotoxin Sabotage world record, and 101.76 was the new perfect time. Except, of course, it wasn't, because 5 months later, Zaipe was able to catch an even faster cycle, being able to enter the control room in time to cut the first tube on the right side. This was quite the small cycle only saving around 4 tenths of a second to get a final time of 
The run wasn't too different from the 101.76, but just slightly better bunny hops put Zaipe in the control room at just the right time to cut that first tube. And once again, our definition of perfection is thrown on its head, with 101.30 now being the perfect neurotoxin sabotage time. It's kind of crazy when you think about it, that through about three years of competition, the word perfect has been thrown around so much, just for these seemingly perfect runs to get beaten. It's really incredible how much speedrunners are able to improve and surpass their own standards. For neurotoxin sabotage, the map is basically a bunny hopping playground, as the player's movement on the catwalks determines the cycle you can catch. And of course, over years of speedrunning, players have greatly improved and refined their technique so that they're able to beat these so-called perfect times. In 2015, runners started incorporating a bunny hop technique known as stair hops. By looking away from the railing on the stairs and spamming jump, you could very quickly jump up a set of stairs. This technique was really useful, because almost every test chamber in the game starts by going up a flight of stairs. But once players really started using stair hops in their runs, there was a small realization. Couldn't we use these for the stairs in Neurotoxin Sabotage? Of course you could. And once again, our standards were raised and our sense of perfection was improved. In January of 2016, Zaipei would utilize stair hops to catch an even faster cycle. He managed to cut the first tube on the right, and by literal frames, he was able to cut the third tube on the left. This resulted in a final time of 100.50. And this time, it really seemed like perfection was achieved. Zaipei noted that he was fairly certain that this time was unbeatable, but also issued the challenge to prove him wrong. Well, Zaipei was by far the most skilled Portal 2 runner at the time, so no one was going to prove him wrong anytime soon. In fact, for the first time in a while, Neurotoxin Sabotage got a bit of time to rest, as 100.50 would stay as the world record. It would take two years for someone to tie Zaipe, where in 2018, Desi would achieve a 100.50, and in 2019, both Nate and Rex would also tie the perfect time. Players were improving at bunny hopping, and it seems our view of perfection was once again about to be improved. The next possible cycle would be cutting the second tube on the left, and in order to catch that, you'd have to get to the control room almost a full second faster and that seemed impossible. But around this time, players started doing something called pre-hopping. By starting a bunny hop while a door was opening, rather than waiting to walk through the door, you could maintain a ton of speed. In Neurotoxin Sabotage, you could pre-hop the door at the beginning and the doors in the small airlock section. This would save just about half a second throughout the level, so there was still a ways to go to get to the next cycle. In 2018, a runner named BlenderEast09 made a tool-assisted speedrun of Neurotoxin Sabotage that was able to catch this next cycle, achieving a 59-second time. I've been using the word perfect a ton throughout this video, but if there was one cycle that genuinely needed to be perfect, it was this one. This run was played by a robot that was able to bunny hop perfectly with no human error, and it was just barely able to catch the second tube on the left, it seemed like this would truly be the chamber's limit. Zaipei didn't even want to attempt this cycle, but rather in 2019, he came back to the chamber just to get a better looking 100.50 for an upcoming montage of his. However, once Zaipei shared his improved run, Blenderfeast pointed out that Zaipei was very close to catching the 59 second cycle. With that information, Zaipei set his sights on perfection and started to attempt sub one minute runs of Neurotoxin Sabotage. In order to get this cycle, Zaipe would literally have to be on par with tool assisted bunny hopping. And let's just say, he did not disappoint.
By the slimmest of margins, Zaipe was able to cut the second tube on the left and finished out a 59.63 world record run. This run featured essentially flawless movement and execution, quite literally human gameplay that matched that of a robot. This sub one minute time was the end all be all time for Neurotoxin Sabotage. I'd be so inclined to even call it perfect. Zaipe put in the description of his run that, it's been said like a hundred times before, but this should be the perfect time, or point one short of it. And in some ironic way, he was right. This run was actually 0.1 seconds short of true perfection. In 2020, a runner named Jython Script discovered that you could pre-walk the ending door, which is basically the same concept as pre-hopping, but with just normal walking instead. Done optimally, this could save 0.1 seconds, so every single cycle on Neurotoxin Sabotage could technically have been done one-tenth of a second faster. This was pretty annoying to do, since the door doesn't really open, it spontaneously breaks, so you had to time it really well. In about one day of this being discovered, Zaipe would somehow manage to hit the sub one cycle again, and achieve a time of 59.60 with the pre-walk technique. And this is where the record stands today. Only a few other runners have ever matched the sub one cycle, and it's really hard to get the full time save out of the pre-walk to beat Zaipe's time. There was some chatter about potential route improvements, as one runner named Wizard was attempting to find a least portals route for the chamber that would circumvent cutting the tubes, which involved using a chair to somehow climb up to the laser portal surface. Wait a second, there's a chair on this level? Implosion Skip, a nearly 8 second route improvement that managed to remove cycles from Neurotoxin Sabotage. The whole basis of the skip comes from the chair in the control room, which is a physics object that we can grab, stand, and jump on. For some reason, runners never took note of this chair for almost 9 years. Using this chair, you can climb up the beams surrounding the elevator and make it all the way to the top. Here, you can make a massive bunny hop in order to pass through this portal. It's worth noting that the portal on the other side is a moving portal, and they behave quite differently than you'd expect. I made a video you can check out that covers all the intricacies of the glitchiness that is moving portals, but all you need to know is that moving portals are glitched, and in this case, the player gets sucked into this orange portal because it is connected to a moving portal, which makes this jump possible. From there, the player is on top of the level, on the right side of the chamber, where they can bunny hop into the ending room with Wheatley, and hit the flags to finish the level. It's worth noting that this whole strat is on a timer. After shooting a portal on the right side through the door, you have to climb up the elevator shaft fast. If you take too long to do the climb, the portal surface will finish moving, and the portal will disappear. So this technically doesn't cut out cycles completely since you want to shoot the portal on the right before it cuts the first tube, in order to give yourself ample time to do the climb. An optimal implosion skip run has to make it to the control room at around the equivalent of a 100.50 in order to catch the panel, so it's not the easiest thing to do, but the best Portal 2 speedrunners could achieve this cycle with not too much hassle. But doing the climb on top of this fast cycle was very challenging especially because the climb took so much technical skill in jumping quickly on and off the chair and navigating the beams. This strat skips the little cutscene of the ending tube imploding and sucking the player in, thus the name Implosion Skip. Only three days after Zaipe achieved his 59.60 world record with the pre-walk, Implosion Skip would be discovered. Kersey Howe, one of the founders of the skip, managed to get the first run with it, getting a time of 100.35 with the slower cycle. Even if there was still a cycle, the beauty of implosion skip is that the chamber was no longer ruled by cycle ties. Once you shot the moving surface, it was game on, as there were no limiting factors stopping you from hitting the ending flags. Zack was the first runner to get a world record run with the implosion skip, 
achieving a time of 52.91 on October 15 of 2020. In the following week, the record would be lowered five more times, as Zaipe and Zanera would take turns lowering the record. However, Zanera would have the last laugh, as two months later in December, he would take back the record with a time of 50.75. While the bunny hopping at the start of this run was impressive, the climb up to the elevator shaft was really stunning. It takes a lot of control and precision to perform this climb in the first place, but Zanera absolutely blitzes through this section. Zanera's time would stand for just about a year, until December of 2021, where a runner named Unity would improve the run by just over a tenth of a second, to achieve a time of 50.61, which is where the record really stands today. The story of Neurotoxin Sabotage shows speedrunners' persistence in improvement, finding ways to save seconds through just more efficient mouse wiggling, but it also shows the ingenuity of speedrunners, being able to find the most unorthodox solutions to puzzles. And even though Neurotoxin Sabotage was declared to be perfect so many times throughout the chamber's history, speedrunners manage to push boundaries and improve upon yesterday's standards of perfection. And ironically enough, I can tell you right now that the current world record is not perfect. Sure, I'd love to say something like a sub 50 second time in Neurotoxin Sabotage is impossible, but you never know with Portal 2. Thanks for watching.